Hello people, uh, this is a very short video, I hope. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the gravitational field inside the Earth's surface. So like what happens if you drill a tunnel from China to US? Isn't that what they say in the comics? So you drill a hole, assuming that you don't break the planet into two. Lah. Okay, drill a tunnel from one end to the other end. What happens to the gravitational field inside? Hmm, so this is extra, it's not in your syllabus. At least not explicitly in your syllabus. Lah. But I guess they could ask you to explain or predict for that one or two marks at the end of the question. Like a sweet dessert surprise. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm going to take this direction as positive, okay? That's why, um, because we know the gravitational field outside of the planet is fairly straightforward. Based on this equation, it will be inversely proportional to R squared. So you can you get a kind of like sloping curve. Alright, so that one is not a problem. I'm treating this direction as positive so that I can maintain a positive graph, but what is this here? Alright, so before we start, I'm going to make a few assumptions, okay? So the first assumption that I'm going to make is that the density of the Earth is uniform, meaning I don't care the core, the mantle, the water, the mountain, the rock, all the shame and density. Of course, you know... It is not the case, but, well, you gotta make some assumptions, lah, right? Okay, so on the grand scheme of things, we can assume that the density of the, density of the Earth is fairly uniform. Assumption number two would be... Alright, the second assumption would be the surface of the Earth is uniform or the Earth is a uniform sphere. The Earth is not flat. Ah. Newsflash, if you follow flat Earth, are you even sciencing? Are you even a science person? Okay, so the surface of the Earth is uniform. Okay, and because of this, we don't know. Um, you see, uh, the Earth is actually not a uniform sphere. Due to the fact that it is spinning and it has some form of centripetal force, it's actually a little bit squished. Because the Earth is spinning, so teensy bit squished. But uh, yeah, we make those assumptions. Uh, if not later, the derivation will make no sense. Okay, so now I think we can start uh, deriving it already. Okay, so one by one. The reason why we have such a problem about inside the uh, Earth's surface uh, is a few things. Number one, you could be thinking, now my name means, you know, R decrease, ma, right? So if R decrease, I should just continue the graph or oh, the graph look like this. Oh, do, 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 do. But this makes no sense. It makes no sense because are you telling me at the center of the Earth, the gravitational field strength is infinitely large? Not going to happen, right? So, nah, it's not going to be that case, okay? So, uh, because when the radius decreases, you have less and less Earth to play with. Mass is also decreasing once uh, you are inside the surface, okay? Because uh, when let's say let's say for example if you are at this position, let me zoom in. Let's say for example if you are at this position, this place here, okay, the effective mass that is attracting you uh, is only this much. So sad, right? So instead of the whole earth attracting you, your mass is not constant. Uh. This is the effective mass, which is TBH, not a lot to say. Okay? So if you're inside the earth's surface, I'm just gonna call this the mass will decrease. So if you look at the equation hall, you have um both mass and also radius. Both also decrease. Which one decrease more? What happened? Nah? Okay, so uh we're gonna base off these two assumptions and form uh two equations starting off with density. Alright, so these are the equations that we have based on our assumptions. The first one, uh, to find density, we will take mass per unit volume. You will see later why I'm trying to use the density to help me with my conundrum of having both R and M change. Okay, the second one would be volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi R E cube. R E here being the radius of the Earth. Lah. So I'm just going to mark this point and call it R E. 
okay so um, from here I'm going to do a few shortcuts instead of substituting because it's not really necessary we just want the shape of the graph not the exact equation for gravitational field strength but you can still find out uh, by substitution all right so from here uh, you will get V is proportional to the radius power 3 so far so good okay so because of this right and density is uniform so from here since the density is uniform or the density is the same m is inversely proportional to volume okay because m over v is constant ma so you bring no wait m is sorry directly proportional makes no sense that's why okay let me rearrange the equation it's getting late guys that's why the confusion in my mind anyway density is constant so mass is proportional to volume okay so putting both of these together you will get mass is proportional to radius to the power of 3 so far so good makes sense what okay so next point gravitational field strength it's time to bring out the equation is gm over r square in other words g is proportional to m over radius of the earth square that is if you are outside i mean you're at the surface lah, okay but once you tunnel into the surface uh, this re will begin to decrease uh. so i'm going to now make this as the radius r okay because as you travel into the earth let's say you travel until here now okay when you travel here this is the planet that is left to okay hang on very ugly i cannot this is the planet that is left to attract the object okay because you tunnel in already ma you are already you did a tunnel here you know, did, 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 did okay you dig a tunnel here so this is the only mass that will attract you so your actual radius is actually decreasing so bearing that in mind i will now readjust this so that this instead of re i will use the radius power 3 make sense okay so the effective volume will be r to the power of 3 can i okay okay anyway this is the effective radius of the effective mass that's still attracting the planet. Alright, so this one will look like r to the power of 3. Because once we go in, we are no longer talking about the radius of the Earth. So now we can look at this. Since m is... Wait, this is... Hang on now. This is square, so not 3. Move too fast. So this is power 2. Okay, so since... Um, this mass is also proportional to r to the power of 3. I can put the r to the power of 3 here and come up with g is proportional to r cubed over r square. So now g will be proportional to r. Okay. Wow, proportional. Wonderful. So this means our mystery is solved. We know what is here. The graph should be a proportional graph, which we all like because it's going to be a straight line to the origin and this value here this is 9.81 our good old 9.81 if we are talking about the planet earth that we are residing in so in this uh, part right what is important here is to know that when you travel inside the earth the amount of mass attracting you is less and less although you are getting closer and closer to the mass so the net effect is such that actually the gravitational field strength will be weaker and weaker so you are still being accelerated to the center of the earth it's just that when you reach the center your speed your acceleration will drop to zero because your field strength will drop to zero and then what happened to you you stay in the middle lah. no la you will continue moving thanks to the fact that you already have speed but you will slow down and stop. So actually what will happen uh, is actually pretty interesting. So let's look at my cursor. Can I bring out a nice cursor? Oh, there you go. There's my hand. 
high five. So if you drop something inside a tunnel, the thing will accelerate. So we move faster and faster, faster and faster, faster and faster. Here is the fastest. And then slow down, stop. Faster and faster, faster and faster, faster and faster. Here is the fastest. Slow down, stop. So the thing is just going to go like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. This, ladies and gentlemen, is like a pendulum swinging. Think about it. The pendulum will stop momentarily here. Let's say you pull up a pendulum and then you let go. The pendulum will travel faster and faster, faster and faster, faster and faster. At the lowest position is the fastest here, the center. And then it will go up in the opposite direction, slow down, stop. And repeat the thing again in the opposite direction so it could go oscillate this way. This, my friends, has a very special name. It's called simple harmonic motion. And it is probably, hopefully, if we did not change the syllabus, it would be the next subtopic, the next chapter that we will enter. Oscillations, the origin story for waves. Okay, so that would be the next topic. If you are my student, then that would be legit the next topic. Okay. If not, then never mind. Lah. Order doesn't matter. As long as you learn everything before your exam. Okay? So the important thing here, before I ramble too much, would be, number one, we are making assumptions that the density is uniform and the Earth is a uniform sphere. Okay? So because the density is uniform, a mass is proportional to volume. Because Earth is a uniform sphere, volume is proportional to the cube of the radius. And from here, because vo mass is proportional to the cube of the radius... So, mass proportional to volume, volume proportional to radius cube, so mass proportional to radius cube. That's why this mass here can be substituted by radius cube. So, G, although proportional to mass over R square, can be written as proportional to R cube over R square. Simplifying it, you get proportional to R. Okay, so the object, when you fall into a tunnel, will travel faster and faster until it reaches the center and then it will slow down. Also, it will also slow down because the Earth is attracting it in the opposite direction. So spend some time, think about this. And uh, yeah, this is the extra video. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.